All right, y'all, Adobe Firefly in Photoshop is blowing my mind. And I'm finally excited about AI in a product that I use every day because I don't know about y'all, but I was tired of using Dolly and Midjourney to just type out little thoughts I had and see what it come, came up with. This, I can actually intersect AI with the work I'm doing and it's pretty great. First off, if you don't know how to uh, access this tool, I'm sure you've seen a couple of videos on social media. If you're obviously a, an Adobe subscriber, you can go onto um, the apps, uh, their beta apps, and you can download it right here along with betas from any other other apps. I wanted to walk you through a couple of examples of uh, ways you can use it. Actually, today I had been playing around with it first to, you know, try to replace the Washington Monument with a spaceship that looks like a shark or with a giant ice cream cone. But, you know, I was trying to get ideas of um, ways to actually use it in my day-to-day -day work. And today an opportunity came up because, you know, my team, we have our headshots, which we use in our websites, our proposals, and a bunch of other materials. And for a specific scenario, I needed a couple of headshots to have you know a slightly different aspect ratio but obviously like that's all the information i have right now and so i took a lot of our images and i gave us pants and look at how good that looks i mean some of the images you know some of the pants are a little wrinkly in my opinion but um it did a pretty great job I brought in this little image because AI is not new on Photoshop. We've had Adobe Sensei for a long time and it has helped us do stuff like uh, removing a background or select selecting a subject. And in this case, I wanted to see what it could do with a little AI, which by the way, I love this new little contextual tool that made its way to the um, release version of Photoshop as well. Let me go ahead and select this dude. Also going to select his shadow and replace him with a, something a little more fun. So now selected him, we have our generative AI tool. Now, if I were to leave it blank, uh, the app is going to try to figure out something. But in this case, let's tell it, fill the area with a giant alligator wearing a top hat. Click generate. Boom. And it gives you a couple of options. In this one, a guy is riding the alligator. That's kind of weird. In this one, uh, there's the alligator as well, but this one looks pretty neat in my opinion. It even gave it a shadow. 10 out of 10. Let's go into this other uh, case because, you know, sometimes I'm working on a campaign on creative direction for it and I need to create some, you know, example ads um, or I'm working on ads themselves and I use an, an image. And, you know, I might want to have some text on the image, but sometimes I want to retain some of the imagery and just, you know, have some extra space to add anything else. So let's take this image here and extend it. And let's see what uh, generative AI uh, does to fill in the information. So I'm going to crop it and then I'm going to use the marquee tool to select the area to fill. Use just generative fill and let's click just generate because I don't exactly have to give it a, a prompt. And uh, if I don't give it one, it'll just use the information of the image similar to the content aware tool to fill in the gaps. It filled it in with more books. It gives me a few variations and I think I like this one. So let me even go a little taller and see how far I can take this one. That is so cool. Let's see all the variations. It even gave me a ceiling to work with if I didn't want the bookshelves to go all the way to the top like it's freaking Ollivanders. That is so cool. You know, I gave you all the initial example of how I gave my coworkers extra pants. Something that very interesting that happened was that one of my female coworkers, when I extended their image, it gave her a skirt and leg tattoos for whatever reason. And it made me think if there's any sort of biases in this AI. Obviously, I'm sure there are biases in these language models. And I just wanted to test it out with another image to see, you know, let's try to extend this image and 
see if uh, it somehow thinks that this is, you know, uh, a woman in the picture and tries to give them a skirt or anything like that, or if it'll give them pants. So let's try it, let's try it out. And as honestly as I su suspected, if it gave me a skirt, it also gave me a few different options. So in this one, it gave me shorts, and in this, a longer skirt with some interesting legs. I do think it's worth considering uh, the biases in uh, a lot of these tools in how they're being used. And that's why I think it's super important to put your values at the center of any work you're doing with AI. And just keep in mind that these language models aren't perfect yet. And so they're gonna make decisions for you. Also, um, I was actually playing around with this same image before and it did give me pants in one. So I think the results are just gonna vary. It, it, there doesn't seem to be a, an exact formula to how it's generating uh, the information in new images. But I'm interested in how Adobe is gonna approach that and uh, you know what guidelines are gonna make available to people to really understand how to best use AI and um, not allow any sort of unsafe content or um, anything that might spread disinformation. So there's still a lot of work to be done in uh, the world of AI, but I just love this sort of application in a tool that I'm using because I'm tired of seeing tweets about graphic designers uh, being out of jobs. And uh, no, we're not out of jobs. We're just learning new tools and how to enhance our current workflows. And uh, I think this is an amazing application of AI. So I'm gonna keep playing around with it and make sure to follow us and I'll keep sharing tips on how I'm using AI in my own.